Hi guys. It is another sticky, soupy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, that would mean Friday morning, July 9th, 2021, as more thunderstorms build on the horizon every day as far as we can see into the future. Rain in the Finger Lakes, no drought here. Uh, anyway, I have got to get back to uh, putting together the new kitchen for what's left of the hip camp here since my next door neighbor opened up a hip camp and stole the little bit of business I had. But anyway, uh, I need to get out there and do that. And oh yes, by the way, I really want to send out a big thank you to the 18 now very kind listeners who have donated to the Hip Camp Rebuilding, Hip Camp Kitchen Rebuilding Fund. Really, really do appreciate that show of support. And uh, one more time, <clears throat> this will be the last time I'm going to put the link if you would like to uh, support what I do around here with my crazy life. I will put the link to how you can throw a few dollars towards that project. But that out of the way, since it is Friday, <clears throat> it is time uh, for our weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we head over to mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls <clears throat> with their weekly roundup of how this planet has been collapsing while my <coughs> outdoor kitchen has been collapsing and uh, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to do this. Uh, Rhett actually chose this green washing horse pucky as the as the leadoff out of, out of all of the articles. Rhett Butler, I, I, Rhett, come on brother, playing the long game Exxon Mobil Gambles on algae biofuel. I remember back in 2008 uh, being on an airplane. Uh, where was I? Flying to Peru or Ecuador somewhere in an Americans in an American Airlines little flight magazine. I distinctly remember this. American Airlines in 2008, right in their flight magazine, was claiming by the year 2020. Their entire fleet was going to be powered by algae. And I guess uh, Rhett Butler did not see all of those hilarious headlines about that Exxon lobbyist, uh, you know, getting burned by that undercover reporter from Greenpeace, fully admitting that uh, all of their talk about crap like this has been greenwashing from the very beginning. Nowhere does Rhett mention that story. <clears throat> yes, algae biofuel initially looked promising, but a few key problems have thwarted major research efforts, including development of a strain of algae able to produce plentiful cheap fuel, not to mention scaling up to mention scaling up to meet global energy demand. Uh, do you think so? While big players like Shell and Chevron have abandoned their efforts, ExxonMobil continues to work. Yes. They're using, Exxon is using CRISPR gene editing technology to make an algae strain that could pave the way to a low carbon fuel and a sustainable future of flying people around in all of these sustainable jumbo, jet, jumbo jets. But many environmentalists, unlike Rhett Butler, met Exxon's claim with skepticism Suspecting green washing. Suspecting green washing from ExxonMobil the same week that one of their lobbyists was caught flat out admitting 
green that they've been greenwashing uh, the planet uh, for how many decades, <clears throat> and all these people shocked <clears throat> to hear an Exxon oil lobbyist admitting that Exxon oil company, uh, Exxon Mobil, has no interest in uh, this crap like bioalgae. Pull your head out of your kazoo. <clears throat> anyway. This. All right. Well, we do have some a point of common ground in Myanmar, you know, between the warring military and the rebels. There is one thing that that both sides of a military conflict can agree on, and that is how to make money from the corrupt jade trade. Yes. A new investigation from watchdog group Global Witness reports that jade mining is a major source of income for both the Myanmar military and armed ethnic groups. Hmm. Do you think so? Armed groups and individual officers have earned fortunes from the jade trade while the environment and the communities who depend on it have paid the price. Okay, let's go back. We've though like to visit the cardamoms in Cambodia. Carving up the cardamoms, conservationists fear a massive land grab in Cambodia. Conservationists have expressed concern over a recently published regulation that makes nearly 127,000 hectares, meaning well over 300,000 acres of previously protected land available or for sale or rent to politically connected businesses. Yes, do you think so? Um, have we heard this story before? Good God, I think we're going to hear it again. Uh, all right, what is going on with Norway salmon farming? You know, this is all part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, you know, called aquaculture, otherwise known as fish farming. Let's see. For Norway salmon farms, giving up deforestation-linked soil, Cargill Corporation proves their roadblock. Do you think so? Uh, at least seven of the biggest salmon producers in Norway have yet to become fully deforestation free. This is because they buy their feed from Cargill, U.S. based Cargill, which is right down the street. I th one of their big bases right down the street in uh, Watkins Glen, New York. Uh, yes, eating, uh, eating fish farmed salmon from Norway which are eating the Amazon rainforest is a prime example of a UN sustainable development goal. Feed a salmon a, in Norway a rainforest from Brazil. Sounds pretty like a sustainable development goal to me. As long as we're talking about fishing, billions in, uh, of dollars in fishing subsidies finance social and ecological harm. Wow. A new report found that the world's top 10 fishing nations are spending billions of dollars on harmful fishing studies to not only exploit their own domestic waters, but to fish in the high seas and the waters of other nations. Yes, experts say these artificial subsidies 
are propping up fishing industries that would not be viable without financial support, meaning taxpayer funded financial support while contributing to overcapacity, overfishing, and illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. Yes. Uh, but don't worry, the issue will be addressed in an upcoming meeting of the World Trade Organization. Yes, I can imagine the World Trade Organization ad addressing that issue. I'll take a wild guess. My guess is the subsidies will increase. All right, you will not believe this. Again, this is why I depend on Rhett Butler when he is not uh, giving Exxon Mobil free greenwashing press. This is why I depend on uh, Rhett and the boys and girls. Tiger habitat threatened by Malaysian Royals mining plans. A company owned by members of this, ro this royal family in Malaysia plans to mine iron ore inside a forest reserve that is home to 15 threatened species, including tigers, elephants, tapers, sun bears, and leopards. The area, which was listed as a permanent forest reserve, yes, I guess is no longer, uh, it was delisted as a permanent forest reserve. Huh. The planned iron mine uh, is one of a spate of extractive projects recently found to be linked to Malaysian royalty. Wow! Imagine that, the king of Malaysia mining a, uh, a, a, a forest reserve. Hmm. And uh, from Malaysia to Indonesia, activists take Indonesia's new mining law to court, but don't expect much. <laughs> yes, uh, activists have filed suit to revoke uh, this law uh, from a, a controversial mining law that has been criticized as pandering to mining companies at the expense of the environment and local communities. Yes. Uh, the plaintiffs say they are not optimistic about the court approving their lawsuit. Yes. All right, so who did kill the, uh, back in 2016, that we we're reporting on that uh, environmental activist in Honduras fighting these planet eaters, Berta Caceres. Well, I guess we have a guilty verdict. Former dam executive found guilty in the killing of Berta Caceres. <clears throat> uh, so how many years did he get? Uh, it does not say here in the summary, Caceres was gunned down in her home in 2016 after leading opposition to the Aguazarca Dam on the Rio Galcarque, a river that holds spiritual significance for her people. She had won the prestigious Goldman Environmental prize one year before getting a bullet in her head. Here is um, about wildfires in Indonesia. I, I guess they're taking a, uh, a week off from reporting on Brazil. Uh, all right. The true environmental cost 
of the internet. Most people do not realize how much the internet requires in energy, physical space, and its carbon footprint. Yes, Enrique Ortiz, a uh, senior program director of the Andes Amazon Fund, offers up some tips of what we can do individually to reduce our carbon footprint from using the internet. Well, ah, uh, Enrique, uh, <laughs> we're all going to, what can we individually do to reduce our carbon footprint from using the internet? Uh, I'm going to have to sleep on that one. Uh, that is a real brain teaser. What can we do as individuals to decrease our carbon front footprint from being on the internet too much each day? Oh, God. Oh, we do. Oh, okay. I just said they were leaving Brazil out of this report. You will not believe this. We, we, we have an earth-shattering report from the Brazilian Amazon. We have never heard this story in uh, Manga Bay. I have been doing this talking to myself, Rant. For 10 years, I have never heard of this one time again. This is why I depend on Rhett Butler and Mongabe for explaining it to me. You, so guys, uh, you need to be sitting down for this headline because you've never heard it before. In the Brazilian Amazon, a road project drives the threat of deforestation plans to uh, to pave a 400 kilometer otherwise known as a 250 mile stretch of road in the Brazilian Amazon could lead to 170,000 square kilometers otherwise known as 65,600 square miles of deforestation uh, in Brazil. This is one 250 mile stretch of road taking down over 65,000 square miles of Amazon rainforest. And a new study shows that forest loss around the now dirt highway uh, is already, uh, forest loss is already at 25% and growing. Experts say the argument that the new road is needed to boost the region's economy and improve connectivity is not valid. Okay, I saw this next story on the uh, mainstream media that figured Manga Bay would be covering it, and here it is. Abnormally high sea turtle deaths after acid-laden ship sinks off Sri Lanka. As many as 176 sea turtles and 24 marine mammals have washed up dead along Sri Lanka's coast during the past four weeks since the sinking of the Express Pearl cargo ship triggered concerns about chemical pollution. Uh, uh, and of course, you know, they say that for every, I've read reports that for every, you know, dead animal that actually washes up, some reports say that 10 sink to the bottom. Okay, we're back in the Brazilian Amazon. I should never try to second guess Rhett Butler. Let's go to the Zingu River Basin in the Brazilian Amazon where we see deforestation soaring 40%. An area of rainforest twice the size of New York City was cleared in Brazil's Zingo River Basin in one month between March and April this year. 
This is a rate of tropical deforestation 40% higher than in the same month last year. Yes, the highest rates of forest loss were reported along the path of Highway 63, otherwise known as the Soy Highway, a major trucking route that cuts through one of the most ecologically important parts remaining in the Amazon rainforest. Deforestation was recorded inside protected areas, including conservation units and indigenous reserves, which points to a failure by the Brazilian government to fight environmental crimes. Yes, the main driver of deforestation inside the indigenous reserves is illegal mining, which activists say has been encouraged by the rhetoric and legislative initiatives of President Jair Bozo Nero. Okay, I have no idea where Nauru, if that's even how you pronounce it, Oh, yeah, I've heard of Nauru. It's that uh, island out in the middle of the uh, South Pacific. Nauru's intention to mine the seabed prompts alarm. Nauru has notified the International Seabed Authority that its sponsored entity, the Nauru Ocean Resources Incorporated Corporation, plans to commence deep sea mining in two years. Yes, uh, experts are concerned that the UN, I guess that's the UN, is it the UN or whoever running that, will prematurely approve the application and that deep sea mining will commence before we fully understand the damage it could cause to biodiversity and ecosystems. You will not believe this, guys, that a blind spot in palm oil policy raises deforestation risk in Malaysia. A blind spot in the sustainable production policies of major palm oil companies. The sustainable production policies of major palm oil companies, that, that's got to be a, a, a short read, uh, is allowing plantain, plantation owners clearing rainforest in Malaysia to continue feeding the deforestation-free supply chains. There you go. Do you think so? All right, guys. I realize I'm uh, talking to myself. So let's just hit a few more. Uh, uh, let's just wrap it up. How about mining exposes indigenous women in Latin America to high mercury levels. Do you think so? Uh, and of course, what's bad for humans is worse for all the other. And But we're going to wind up with a, an interview with oceanographer Kim McCoy. Uh, Kim McCoy and wants us to know we are intimately connected with nature. No, we are unintimately disconnected with nature. I have some bad news for you, lady. We are not intimately connected with nature. Uh, you know, it's like the old Woody Allen joke. 
I love to go out into the woods and become two with nature. Anyway, speaking of becoming two with nature, uh, my little dog and I need to get back on uh, rebuilding our collapsed kitchen. Let's see, I've got the lumber, I've got the concrete, I've got the plastic roofing. Uh, what else do we need to do? We've killed trees. We've killed, I don't know, river beds. We've uh, bought our uh, fossil fuel roof. We have paid our money to Lowe's. Well, our money, our, our kind donations have gone to buying, let's see, lumber and concrete at Lowe's. <clears throat> I forgot what I bought at Walmart and more lumber at Home Depot, so we are doing our part to support the Lowe's, Home Depot, and Walmart economy by becoming two with nature, and I really, all kidding aside, want to thank uh, my very kind readers who are supporting this latest construction project here at the Hip Camp. And for the last time, I promise, I'm going to put the link in here, and I will not beg any more money, but I really do appreciate it. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog, we are done. <clears throat> now, you can go outside and become two with a chipmunk.